People say Australian hardcore music has changed, changed in both its style and in its popularity. I'd have to say that nothing has changed Australian hardcore more than the internet and social media. But is this a bad thing? I think there's a difference between using online to your advantage and just being a bit over the top with it, I think, or a bit serious. I think too many bands probably take themselves a bit too serious and too many bands want to be massive instead of actually just being a good band and getting big. Um, and being a hardcore band doesn't necessarily mean you're ever going to be big. Like it sort of doesn't really mean if you can get shows, well then you good luck to you. But there's probably more bands out there that can't get shows that can are getting shows, and there's more bands that are rehearsing, you know, six nights a week or whatever, than are actually putting out releases. One of the most popular venues for upcoming hardcore bands to perform is at the club Hot Dan. Social network has definitely changed. Uh how bands interpret getting successful. Um, look, easy way, if you rely nothing on play counts and, and fans on Facebook, you will not be a successful band. It's definitely a very powerful tool um, in regards to marketing and even just letting kids know about upcoming dates and news about the band. It's probably the best way to let people know, actually. More of the public domain is now present in the private domain so that people individually and in their homes have access to a greater breadth of information but also a greater breadth of contact with people. It's also really changed the way the styles of communication that people engage in. So, I mean, at a really basic level, that has to do with the amount of time people spend interacting and the kind of time that they would spend actually online communicating with one another. But also the forms of communication that people use online mean that people have learned to communicate and develop really strategic ways of communicating rapidly with one another using things in kind of short-term bursts rather than in prolonged kind of interactions with people. As social media became more popular for communication, it became another tool for bands for promotion. A new wave of bands came onto the scene which had a new approach to their audience, almost entirely online. Wake, Wake up, up to the, the crowd! crowd. Reaching a million views is like um, something that we never planned on ever having to happen like within the next 10 years, let alone three months, it's just been out of control. I could say the last two years have been a uh, massive prep preparation, um, yeah. marketing wise, um, thinking about how to go about, about, about it in this scene and um, we've stuck to the plan and uh, coming out like a well-established band is, and having the attributes of a well-established band has sort of hyped things up and made us a bit more well-known and having the help from fr other friends and um, other bands in the industry has also benefited us a lot in, in getting those views and getting the publicity that we need. So. Okay. We have Facebook, Twitter, Stickam, Tumblr and Instagram. And YouTube. And Red YouTube as well and red tube. <laughs> no one in the Australian music scene has really used the social media thing and because we used it, it's worked to our advantage in such a big way and and yeah, I think in a lot of ways that pisses everybody off. Like, people wish they thought of it before and now they're all angry at us and shit. While particular bands believe an online strategy or approach is the way to go, others disagree. I don't think it's wrong. I just think it's uh, not a smart strategy, probably. Um, you find that Bands that sort of take that approach, not working on their groundwork in their local country or whatever, 
Uh, they don't really have a. They do have. They can get a fan base, but not a solid fan base. Not loyal fans. Just sort of fans that hop on the on the trend bandwagon. And um, we find that a lot of bands that do that sort of have. They have their moment in the spotlight, but they sort of fade away quicker than they sort of start up. People would much rather see a live show than a recording any day. If you kind of don't use a lot of the social networking tools, you can be left behind a little bit. But yeah. you, you can't rely on it, that's what I'm getting at. You just can't say, well this is the only way I'm going to promote my band and get my band out there. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion and everyone, they're going to hate on you for the smallest thing. But you can't please everybody. But all you can do is just is work with the people that you do please and make them happy. And if you change one person's life, then it's just amazing. Yeah. After the Crown hasn't played a show, but we've played all the fucking shows where there's two people there. We've played the shows where there's you know 100 people there and we've done all the bullshit. We've spent a lot of money going around the country. We've done all that bullshit and we're kind of like, well, we're sick of doing that. So let's you know, pick up our game and go overseas and like get in the big league. Social media has fucking helped us. Oh, well, bands, it makes it the biggest thing, like when MySpace came along, it, um, it allowed a band, like my close exposure was through Parkway, and it allowed them to sort of probably tour overseas to a point where they could draw people in the UK and the US without having a local release or without having um, like a distribution type of network that they had back in Australia. And the only way that I guess a lot of people will be exposed to Venice through was through MySpace, and what, I guess the snowball effect that happened through that type of social media before, well before Twitter and Facebook and whatever else there is nowadays. Um, so it definitely, it just means that a person, in a good thing, it means that a person can, on the other side of the world, can find out about a band without having to spend months and months waiting for a mail order to arrive to their house, but. In saying that, it also means I think too many bands are doing two things too quick and uh, I think the talent of actually being in a band nowadays isn't quite there. Australian hardcore music has changed. It is now open to a much larger audience. It has many subgenres and different approaches. But really, in the end, all that matters is the music. Cinnamon! I've been holding this burp in for like the last five minutes. Wait, it was cut, was cut. Oh, cut? Cut! And YouTube. And red. YouTube as well. And Red Tube. <laughs> and Pornhub. Capture the cock Red Tube. Um, so we like we. <laughs> Did you just do it? I Oh. I had to. It was lingering for That is our answer to the question. <laughs> <laughs> that is our Did you okay. pick that one up? <laughs> I can't do any more of that. <laughs> One of the most popular venues for hardcore fans to perform! It's a hot damn!